We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Terrence Bud Crawford of Errol Spence continue to go at it, firing shots left and right, bang, 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 bang. Online. We're going to talk about it. We unpack. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel, donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel. Conor McGregor is about to fight on pay-per-view. Order the pay-per-view from me. It helps the channel. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford continue to go at it. It looks like it's not going anywhere soon. Um, Terrence Crawford's sister, she was involved in it. He says, y'all can believe the BS if you want. This is Errol Spence. Y'all can believe the BS if you want. I don't duck nothing. Terrence Crawford's sister said, make the fight then. Somebody says, Crawford is a puppet controlled by top rank and Bob Arum. Crawford will do whatever Bob Arum says, period. And Crawford's sister says, bye, you sound stupid. Someone says, stay out of your man business. And she said, get the fuck out of my mentions. My brother is my business, the fuck. You know, so it's like the whole Crawford family going in. Tell your brother to stop ducking Porter. Crawford's sister replied. Tell Porter to say he want to fight, but, and I bet any type of money that he will get washed. You know, so that's heating up. Um, laughing my ass off. You know, Terrence don't want no smoke. He got a sis as his mouthpiece. Nah, sis always speaks when she's something. When she sees something, I think it's supposed to say that has to do with her brother regardless. You know, so she's going in on everybody. Um, that's up to Al, sis. He can only express that he wants it. He doesn't have a promoter, remember? Al is his manager. Just tell him you want to fight and start the negotiations. EJ going to wash, dude. Only one way to find out. Um, a fan says Spence would KO Crawford within the first three rounds. Crying emoji. You, my friend, don't know shit about boxing. So let's let's recap. There's a lot going on. Errol Spence says, y'all can believe the BS if you want. I don't duck nothing. Terrence Crawford, he responded and his sister said, he's here. Make the fight then. This is what Crawford said. So what's he said? So what's been the hold up, homie? When I came to the division, y'all all said I had to get a title first. Now you change your mind and talking about wrong side of the street. So I'm just here for another excuse. What up? This is Crawford talking. Um, your last opponent knocked you down in the fourth. What you think Spence going to do to you? Crying emoji. This is some fan. Crawford says, get stopped just like my last opponent. So, you know, he ain't backing down. <laughs> you know, people are laughing and jumping in. I'm just trying to give you guys all the latest and greatest. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. It's going down. Crawford had a couple other things that I seen. Um, I'm trying to get to everything. I don't want to miss you fight these nuts. <laughs> Somebody says, just fight Porter first. And he says, you fight these nuts. Hey, Crawford going off on social media. Um, clearly, your ass can't read what I said. When he get ready, re re. You puss, LOL. You know he can't fight. So the balls, so your balls dropped. Oh, wow. See, people are going in. Man, I, I don't think what's been happening lately is is good for Crawford's side. You know what I'm saying? Because he was, I don't know, he's never been super vocal on social media. You know, he just puts things here and there. And then now he's like having to battle fans and stuff. People are getting split over this whole thing. He says, um, keep defending him because I'm going to tell y'all all now. And I mean what I say when the day comes, when I knock him all, I think it means when I knock him out, I want all y'all to keep that same energy because he going to cry in the car. He wasn't built for this shit. 
I got over here. Just watch me show the world. So, you know, Terrence Crawford talking that cash shit. He said, Errol Spence, I'm ready when you're ready. Matter of fact, I've been ready before I even had a 147 pound fight. Like I've been said, you got these dudes or you got these people fooled, but not me. Whenever you get back right, I'll smoke you. All you got to do is sign the contract next and I'm on your head. Someone says, but why did you resign with Bob Arum? This fight could have been easy if you didn't resign, LOL. See, this is what I'm saying. This is what fans are saying. Like, see, Crawford, this this is my honest opinion. I don't have a side in this. I like Crawford, like Spence. You know, if you don't believe me, eat a dick, bro. I don't care. But I like both of them. I'm just giving you my opinion. Everybody else has their opinion. This is just my opinion. People are asking these questions, and Crawford is dismissing that aspect, you know, that aspect of it. Why did you resign with top rank? He's he, he had the dude yelling, the you know Bernie dude on the video that I posted yesterday night, and the dude was like, "Yeah, I'm a boxing historian." And why wasn't y'all calling for the Porter? I've already went over all of that. Porter had the belt from September to September, and he fought Danny Garcia for the vacant belt. Then he fought his mandatory with the WBC, tough ass fight with a Cuban guy who knocked out Ray Robinson, who really beat mean machine and ray robinson beat crawford in the amateurs this is fact this is all like you can go watch all these fights or, or whatever if you can find them and then um you guys gave Craw uh, sean porter a tough ass fight sean porter got past it and then he fought errol spence in the unification so what what was sean porter have supposed to be doing differently i mean he did everything sean porter he got a good ass resume you know and he had the belt and he he fought like a champion fought championship caliber he wasn't taking like light to him and kenny weren't taking like easy tough uh easy touch you know auto violin type people he you know tom schwartz he wasn't doing that terrence crawford says and stop using the fucking promoters managers and advisors for that weak ass excuse y'all doing they work for us y'all dumb motherfuckers if you really want to fight you tell them i don't give two fucks that's who i want to fight let your nuts drop you say you your own boss errol spence you know to me i i still feel the same way i love crawford i think he's i think he's going about it the wrong way i think this is frustration and, and kind of really desperation based on the situation do i think crawford would fight anyone in, you know in this room anyone that is in this stratosphere of welterweight absolutely so that's not my beef i i think crawford means what he says he would fight danny mikey errol but based on the politics of boxing which i predicted all of this stuff to come i don't even understand why people at this point would actually sound shocked by it i have no idea because this was I seen this coming a mile away. I, it was very easy to see. People agreed at that time when he re-signed with top rank. They're like, oh, why he do that? So in my opinion, none of this stuff is, is surprising. Like I said, I have videos and tons of content where, you know, I question, a lot of people question, does this make the most sense for Crawford? You know? And you know he did he made the decision that he made and now i think that's where it's all starting to come into into play it's starting to come into play because he's already went through the jose benavidez is the jeff horns who also moved up in weight he's already beat the mean machine you know and he did all these things handily amir khan so there's really no in my opinion there's no reason to watch rematches to any of those fights that he's fought at welterweight because he won by stoppage he won cleanly and i think this is really an offshoot of frustration because lack of promotional power and the other thing is first of all it, it to me terrence crawford's approach right now it, it, it sounds like it sounds like frustration you know that's the best way to put it you know the other thing, the reason I'm saying that is because Crawford, everybody knows Errol Spence was just in a horrendous car accident where he almost potentially lost his life. So with that being the case, him fighting ain't likely. Like 
he's pressing Errol Spence, but Sean Porter's right there. He's pressing Errol Spence, but Keith Thurman fought Pacquiao. He's resting. You know, what about these fights? Danny Garcia already got a fight this month, so we got to see how that looks. You know, it's just Mikey Garcia is already fighting Jesse Vargas. Okay, cool. But it's like he, he keeps pressing Spence, but Spence is the only guy who suffered a horrendous car accident and he's, he's kind of out of commission. You know, beyond this, I, I my thing is this, is... Fox, PBC, Showtime, you know, premier boxing champions, we'll say, have done an excellent job of marketing and branding Errol Spence Jr. He's selling out, even though Terrence Crawford's boy who did the video, in my opinion, was hating because he said, oh, we know Mikey brought all the fans, which is false because Errol Spence has done numbers at the Staples Center and Frisco at the Star without a Mexican, Mexican-American fighter like Mikey Garcia but in the video that I posted Terrence Crawford's mans attributed it to Mikey's fan base and a Latino fan base but Errol Spence is drawing numbers regardless you know he fought in LA and Texas he ain't from LA and he did numbers with Sean Porter in fact Logan Paul and this is actual fact Logan Paul and KSI have these crazy fan bases you know 40 million subscribers on one platform and instagram and all the millions upon millions they did less attendance for their event than errol spence versus sean porter in the same building so errol spence with the non-latino in sean porter who sean porter's previous fight with you guys wasn't filled out it wasn't sold out you can look in the crowd and see you know the weather wasn't even good and when sean porter fought against spence then it was it was packed. I was there, you know, so there's some misinformation from Crawford's man. You know, Crawford is having to do stuff like this, like post the Mayweather picture. You know, Mayweather's not going to come back and fight Crawford. It just it's not even likely, you know, from my perspective, I don't see it. And he's lashing out. And I, I, I still have some severe questions like why is ESPN not promoting him the way they're promoting Tyson Fury? Why is ESPN? Um not giving them the same looks that they give Vasil Lomachenko. Lomachenko is about to be in a big ass fight for ESPN, which is Teofimo Lopez. But how is this no succession plan for Terrence Crawford to have a contemporary or, you know, start the process, get the ball rolling so he didn't run out of options? These are things that I feel this is why I think Crawford is going about it the wrong way is he's he's kind of venting publicly and he's making it look like this is pbc's fault or a problem it's not anybody else promotional uh company that you're not aligned with or signed with it's not their duty to work together with you and if that's the case then how come bob arum and top rank years ago they had all these welterweight 140 to 147 pound guys who never fought anybody that was with PBC, and there were great fights. Brandon Rios and Broner used to go back and forth. Never happened. Adrian Broner called out Juan Manuel Marquez. Never happened. Mike Alvarado was a relevant person. Never fought Broner. Never fought Danny Garcia. It wasn't Brandon Rios didn't fight Danny Garcia until Brandon Rios left top rank and signed with Al Heyman. Manny Pacquiao never fought Broner until he left top rank and signed with Al Heyman. Manny Pacquiao just fought Keith Thurman, never fought Keith Thurman when he was with Bob Arum in top rank. And it wasn't until he left top rank and signed with Al Heyman that he fought him. So that's multiple examples. Meanwhile, Tr Terrence Crawford in the lighter divisions, why didn't he fight Bro why didn't he fight Broner? When he was at 135, 140, you know, he could have fought Broner. That would have been a great fight. I wanted to see it. You never really seen that. You never really seen top rank so much even worried about it why didn't broner fight ruslan provotnikovs uh timothy bradley why didn't he fight errol spence keith thurman amir khan i mean we could have done this all day for for the past decade and the fact is when top rank actually had names at 140 to 147 they weren't co-mingling with pbc so i'm sorry i don't feel bad you know even manny pacquiao manny pacquiao he could have fought Mayweather and refused to do a drug test. This is fact. There's videos on the internet where Pacquiao 
his own trainer, Freddie Roach, says, yeah, we dropped the ball. The first negotiations failed because of us, because we wouldn't take the Mayweather drug test, which now is, you know, people are like, oh, clean boxing program and VADA. And it's you're like frowned upon if you don't do drug testing like Chavez Jr. That gets frowned upon nowadays. But back when Mayweather was requesting it, they said, oh, you're chicken shit. You afraid to pack you out? Wop, wop, wop. And then now drug testing is a standard. It's like kind of like a standard for big fights. People want to see it, you know. But Pacquiao had the opportunity to fight Mayweather years before. And luckily they waited, waited, and it still was relevant. And people paid out paid out to see it and shelled out cash. But, you know, we don't have a Mayweather and Pacquiao. Two anomalies that came in the game doing what they were doing, selling millions of pay-per-views on their own. Nobody's selling a million pay-per-views on their own really anymore, you know, like Mayweather and Pacquiao. Those times may be dead. It's going to take the right dance partner in the right fight. And for Terrence Crawford's sake, he's he's accomplished a lot, you know, undisputed. I think he's ambitious. I think he's very competitive, but he's lashing out at PBC and Errol Spence, who's on the road to recovery. But realistically, he should be in the top rank offices tearing down posters and stuff like that because they're the ones managing him and promoting him and they should be able to facilitate big fights and audiences you don't see anybody from the pbc like a relevant party complaining j-rock is in kind of a tune-up philly fight he's not complaining he just took a tooth uh tooth and nail tough you know a tough opponent and heard and now he's fighting at home he knows the big fights are available to him after this. All he has to do is win, look good, retain his titles. Then in the future, he can get Charlo. He can get Hurd. He can get Edislandi Lada. These, you know, Erickson Lubin. He can get these types of fights, right? You look at Danny Garcia. He's fighting Ivan Redcash. Take that, take that out, you know, take care of Ivan Redcash. He has big fights. He can fight Broner. He can fight rematch with Thurman, rematch with Porter fight uh pacquiao he could fight errol spence but the person lashing out is team crawford because guess what they don't have the big fights which is what i told you and now people are acting brand new like this was some huge shock and it sucks and people want to live and play this game like in a perfect world but that's that's not how it works business is cruel business is cold and business is cutthroat it's not al Heyman or anybody's duty to force and make these things happen like aside from the twitter stuff has bob aram reached out and you know try to make a deal i have a video where bob aram says he's not interested in crawford versus any pbc guy because they're all weak except for errol spence beggars can't be choosers so this really crawford has his own side to blame you know and when Bob Arum had more toys at 140 and 147, he wasn't sharing them either. So I don't understand what people are talking about. You know, and I think Crawford is starting to get heat for his resume and fighting like guys like Amir Khan who probably weren't and definitely weren't in their prime when, when he fought. And he's sick of it. He don't want to hear it. And I think the competitor in him wants the big names and it's, it's starting to grow. And it's getting to the point where it's contradictory. Terrence Crawford, his boy Bernie Crawford, they said stuff like, oh, we don't need PBC guys. We're not worried about them. But he keep talking about the PBC guys. So that's a contradiction. They said, oh, we're not worried about them. Y'all high and y'all cowards. Well, okay, let them be cowards then. If you don't need them. But again, that's a contradiction. You say you don't need them, but the Twitter rants are against them. You know, Tim Bradley's rant on top rank. And the other thing is, I don't think that ranting on Twitter is going to do the trick. If That's not going to get a fight done. That's point blank period. That's not going to get a fight done. You know, if, if Al Heyman and PBC have plans to make Danny versus Pacquiao, Pacquiao versus Spence, Danny versus Spent, whatever, then they're going to do that. And there's nothing you could do about it, you know? And I, I said this from the beginning, and I don't know, again, why people are acting so brand new. Why would I be angry at Spence? We know Crawford is, is a beast. He's dope. He's great. He's skillful. But why would I be mad if he just got to the division? He has one belt 
and then Spence has two belts now, and he starts fighting big brands, big names and big brands, and or champions like Pacquiao, and or guys like Danny Garcia, former champions with big brands that make big fights. You know, that doesn't make sense for me. They're built. This is what I'm saying. See, what's happening is top rank. They don't have enough chess pieces in the welterweight division, and they want it to be like, oh, work. They want you know. There's almost like they're they're begging for um, Al Heyman to work with them, and they think by pressuring Al Heyman by you know these wars and getting fans involved, that's going to change something. But I don't see it. You know, mentioning Wilder versus um, Fury. That has nothing to do with Crawford, who just got to welterweight four fights ago or whatever it is, became a champion in his first fight, and has no stable mates because Crawford is in a totally different situation than Wilder versus Fury. Because Wilder and Fury were, they ended on a stalemate, a draw, a tie. And this was before ESPN top rank had anything to do with, with uh, Tyson Fury. So they weren't managing his career. They had nothing to do with Wilder Fury. And it was left a as a draw. So they were supposed to do an immediate rematch. If you really think about it, if anything, Tyson Fury versus Wilder, it should have been an immediate rematch. And Tys Tyson Fury signing with ESPN and Top Rank, Top Rank actually prolonged this and watered it down. We should have already watched Wilder Fury too. Wilder, I have video from a conference call with Wilder, where he said he wanted the media rematch. He says, yeah, people, you know, he was referring to Andre Ward, I'm assuming. People like Andre Ward and others, I don't know why they don't think I want the rematch because I want the rematch with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury ran to ESPN. So I'm not giving ESPN and top rank a bunch of credit for that because if anything, they caused the fight to be prolonged and they put it on the back burner. We were already supposed to watch Wilder versus Fury 2 in may of last year but they we didn't because bob aram got involved and in, you know espn and they now had a say on his career and they talked him out of doing the immediate rematch or they agreed that he shouldn't do an immediate rematch and they started giving him tune-up style fights and one of the tune-up style fights was extremely difficult for him auto violent the tom schwartz fight not so much that's the reality Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford have never fought as pros. I don't think they've even sparred before. So this is a totally different independent situation. And in boxing, you got to look on a case by case basis. So I think this is frustration because top rank don't have the chess pieces. So you see um, ball head Bradley ranting and, you know, going crazy on ESPN after Crawford fought Khan on pay-per-view, which was a failure. And Bob Arum started cussing out Al Heyman, saying he's blocking fights. Now you're seeing Crawford lash out on Twitter because they don't have the power and the stable. And Crawford is, there's no way he's going to get probably to the next, next level of stardom without contemporaries. So to be honest, Crawford has been a little bit, uh, in denial about that because he's done recent interviews said I don't need these PBC guys okay then don't fight them don't fight them and if you don't fight them then you're going to be left with Amir Mom and uh, Mike Barboza Jr. and Best Sputin Kell Brook or something that, Ed that Errol Spence already beat so it's not going to be good because it's not going to be the names that would catapult you to superstar and it's just a lot of misinformation going on where like Crawford, I get, I get the, I get it from a perspective of hunger. He's hungry. He wants the fights, but this is precisely why people for years said, I don't know, maybe you should be T, you know, but TBC promotions or bud promotions and do your own thing and leverage the field. But this is what happens. Dillian white, he had an opportunity to leave rematch room and he didn't he had an easier time to get to Deontay Wilder if he did that see why is it see this is what I'm saying with old media why does old media want Jamal Charlo to sign a one fight deal to DAZN 
to fight Andrade when Charlo is a bigger name right now. He's putting up bigger numbers than Andrade right now, right? So they want PBC guys to do a one fight deal. They want Tank, who's way bigger star than Tevin Farmer. That's just, I'm not talking skill, skill for skill, who win. I'm talking about star power. They want Tank to do a one fight deal and fight Tevin Farmer, but on the zone. But ain't nobody suggesting that Terrence Crawford do a one fight deal on Fox or Showtime with the PBC fighter. I remember Shane Mosley went to Showtime for the Pacquiao fight, I think it was. So if Terrence Crawford and Top Rank have no options and they don't have anyone to put, then that might be a compromise or a sacrifice that you have to make. But the thing is, it seems like Team Crawford, they want their cake and eat it too. This, this was ultimately bound to happen that Crawford being too good and too, he was gonna keep advancing and they had no one to feed him. And they haven't built any welterweights or anyone that poses a, a thought, a, a, a threat. And now Crawford's stuck and now he don't have, now he's like, man, what's next? What's my next challenge? Because I can understand that from a perspective as a man, cause I'm highly competitive. You get what I'm saying? And listen, I'm not, I don't pick sides and all this stupid shit. I like Crawford, like Spence, it is what it is. I'm just giving you my honest opinion, but I can respect and understand the frustration because I'm a competitive person. Nobody wants to be, if you're a competitive person at least, nobody wants to be at a job and be underutilized. You have all this energy and creativity and you feel you could do more, but you're restricted. That's where Crawford's at right now. So I can understand it, but me understanding it versus the realities and, and, and being sensible, these are two different things. Crawford had to have seen this coming if he was mapping out his career, point blank period. Now that he didn't, or he didn't, and he's burned through everybody he could fight over there on top rank, who ESPN's not doing a great job promoting him. I do more promotion for Crawford than ESPN. That's facts, ask anybody, anybody who mess with my channel. So don't try to pit me against Crawford or say I'm saying this because I'm hating and all this stupid stuff. Throughout my tenure, I have covered more Crawford fights and gave um, free promotion using my brand. We're almost at 200,000 or whatever than ESPN. I really feel like that because I'm giving you little nuanced things covering the fight, woom, woom, woom. You know, check my track record. I'm building up, making people want to watch fights, being at the fights and stuff like that. So he had to see this coming. But even if he didn't, then that's where, okay, this is your error. This is your team. They can't provide you for that. Like what you need, now you have to possibly compromise. Go fight on Fox or on Showtime. You know, I'm not saying necessarily sign to Al Heyman, but maybe do a one fight deal. Y'all want Tank Davis. See, that's the thing. Everybody want to have a pissing contest, but no one wants to budge. Y'all want y'all want Tank to sign a one fight the zone deal because they're offering him money. One fight the zone deal, and you want Tank, a big ass superstar with PBC, you know, who they said his next fight's gonna be pay-per-view. You want Tank to go fight on the zone for one fight. You want Charlo to lend his credence and his brand to the zone for one fight to fight Andrade, who he's currently more relevant than. You know, I'm not talking about who wins fights and skill for skill. I'm talking about relevance and popularity, right? And A side and stuff. But no one's saying Crawford, who Errol Spence has two belts. Crawford has one. These are facts. Errol Spence is privy to the bigger names. So therefore, his resume has the bigger notable name. Kell Brook, you know, Lamont Peterson. It was going to be Danny Garcia in January, but he got injured. And then, you know, he has Sean Porter, blah, blah, blah. Mikey Garcia. So he's been able to fight these guys where Terrence Crawford has fought some good guys, but guys with smaller brands because that's what he was able to get. That's the fight. Like in Dongo, I was at that fight. It was a good win for Crawford, but in Dongo is not necessarily, you know, known amongst the whole boxing world. You know, Danny Garcia is. If you watch boxing and you, you're really a fan, you know who Danny Garcia is. But if you're really a fan you don't necessarily know Deary Jean like that or in Dongo you know things like that it is what it is so I've seen this coming a mile away um and I think this is just frustration because they don't they don't hold the cards anymore in the welterweight division and it's bad for Crawford because 
he don't have no one at 54. Al Heyman got all the people chess pieces at 54. Jaime Munguia just moved up, so he's done. You know, he's at 160. And all the other top big name guys, J Rock, Heard, Edis Landilada, and Jamel Charlo, the leftover, the guys that are still at 54, you know, because Andrade moved up, Canelo moved up, Jamal Charlo moved up. So the only guys that are left at even 54 are what? Al Heyman fighters. So Al Heyman, you know, he's kind of almost monopolized the board. You know, why don't they make this fight? Crawford versus Lomachenko. Lomachenko said he wanted it a couple years ago because they don't want to sacrifice. That's what I'm saying. ESP in the top rank, they don't want to sacrifice people like that. Terrence Crawford beat the brakes off Lomachenko. I put money on that. He'll beat him up. Bro, that would be it would be ugly too. And then people will cry, like, oh, Lomachenko's too small. And but they said Loma's better than Floyd. Floyd actually beat people's asses at 47 and 54. Why can't Lomachenko go up? Mikey Garcia just fought Spence, and Mikey Garcia and Lomachenko started off at the same division. And Mikey Garcia has already went to 140, and he's about to fight another 47 pounder who's 5'10 and a half, 5'11, and Jesse Vargas, and he's already fought Errol Spence. So if Lomachenko is the best fighter in the world, ESPN number one, why why he he don't fight at 47 against Crawford? I'll watch it, I'll support it, because they're not gonna put Lomachenko because they know he's gonna get taxed, bro. IRS time, Uncle's Uncle Sam. So they're not gonna do him like that, you know. If you want to make an omelet, you got to crack some eggs. So they haven't made a succession plan for Crawford. And now he's stuck. Lomachenko has a big fight for him. Teofimo. Crawford don't have that. Crawford don't have a big fight. They haven't readied nobody. And this is what I've told you for years when it comes to black fighters with top rank. Black fighters don't get moved the same. They be fighting gladiator style fights with a tough schedule and then Crawford his first fight at 47 he already fighting the champion so they didn't string it out they didn't give him a Lomachenko type of schedule so what happened is he ran through everybody he ran through everybody relevant that he could stopped them all and he's still hungry but he already ate everything off his plate this is where we're at Lomachenko in, in between he, he's fighting some Pedrazas and Mariagas and Jason Sosa's Crawford didn't have that luxury. He's just mashing, fighting all the best. Mean Machine has some power, two-time Olympian. Jose Benavidez can box, comes from a boxer family, tall, power, you know. Jeff Horn was a champion, just beat Pacquiao, etc. He already ran through them guys. Amir Khan was a big name. He already ran through them, made it look easy for most of those fights, you know, except for Mean Machine and, um, yeah, the Benavidez had some... You know, he, he he very handily beat it, but the bottom line is, you know, some of the early rounds are a little bit close, somewhat close, and then he pulled away. So that's what's that's what's causing the frustration from my view. Crawford, he that's why he keeps bringing up Errol Spence because he don't have nobody, like, he has to piggyback off their name or try to force the guys into a corner, but it's, it doesn't work like that because you're not going to be able to force another promotion. If that was the case, I would have watched Canelo versus Andre by now they're on the same side of the fence they ain't even fought you know we would have seen charlo versus canelo you know but it's clear golden boy and disown they got their own thing with canelo they don't want to make a charlo or andre fight with canelo so what's the difference here but again there's also racist with old media so they don't care and they're going to push this this notion about crawford spence because it's two black fighters they don't care if it's black on black crime, if it's two black fighters. But they're not going to push like this for Charlo to get a shot at Triple G. Charlo to get a shot at Canelo. They'll make excuses. Oh, what has Charlo done? He fought a one-legged fighter and oomp, 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 and he don't sell. And, and they'll let Rocky Fielding get a Canelo shot all day. They'll let Steve Rolls get a Triple G fight all day. This is where we're at in boxing. So I'm not... I'm not denying that Crawford, I think he would fight and he wants these fights. He really feels he can win, but he's, 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 it is across the street. It is the size of the street. He's acting like, nah, there's no, who cares about size of the street? It matters. If someone don't want to make the fight because of, they have their own succession plan or plan of attack, then that's what it is. Like I said, from the jump, why didn't top rank when they had Pacquiao and Crawford, why didn't they make that? Then at the very least, 
that was years that they were on the same roster and Crawford was at 140. Pacquiao might have been at 47. But Pacquiao even came down and fought Chris Algieri at like 143. So they could have made it a catch weight. They could have, Crawford might have moved up earlier. But they never tried to make it. Bob Arum, you see, this, I'm telling you guys, this is what this, so Crawford has more Manny Pacquiao. Not fighting Crawford. Look, Bud Crawford's promoter admits he killed the Manny Pacquiao fight. See that? Because it would have ended one way. And this is the Omaha World Herald. Omaha. So that's where Crawford's from. Here's another one. Here's the actual interview. Bob Arum admits he killed Pacquiao Crawford fight because he didn't want to see Pacquiao get hurt. That's what he said, bro. Look, Bob Arum admits he killed Pacquiao Crawford fight, didn't want to see Manny take damage. There's the interview. You guys check it out. It's on Fight Hub. So, you know, people want me to feel like sorry, but I can't because I studied this whole thing. I was pushing for Crawford to get the Pacquiao fight on my channel. So you're not going to turn it to make it look like I'm anti-Crawford or anything. I'm 100% I'm truth. I wanted to see Crawford because he wanted to fight Pacquiao. He openly said that in multiple interviews. They even asked him after he beat Deary Jean. This is how deep it goes back, and I remember all of it. He said, yeah, I'll fight Pacquiao. You know, He said, I'm not going to chase nobody, but I want to fight Pacquiao. This is what he said. But Bob Arum is admitting that he made sure it didn't happen because he didn't want to see Pacquiao take damage. Now, Crawford and Team Crawford are fretting because all is popping for the W, the WBC champion and IBF champion, Errol Spence, is popping for the welterweights over there. They're in bigger fights. You know, truth be told, if Crawford doesn't work with an Al Heyman fighter next, I don't see even a fight that's going to draw Danny Garcia versus Ivan Redcash interest. Who is he going to fight? Best Butin? You know, Barboza. Like, I, I just, Mike Alvarado, like, I, I really can't think of in-house fights that he could fight. That's the main problem. So they want to put the pedal to the metal and, you know, get the fans involved and make people complain and protest. But this is what people were warning Bud about when he first resigned and before he resigned. Like, hey, when your contract ends, you should explore your option. He didn't do that. So, this was this was exactly why people told him to do that so that's the reality we unpacked coming to you live and then like i said spence he's coming off an injury so i don't presume that fight would be next anyway so it's weird to see sean porter being dismissed from his buddy bernie and even even um even a fight the fight is, is kind of dismissed from Terrence Crawford himself. Look. So, it, you know, it's not, this This is not helping the argument. Tim Bradley yelling at everyone saying, he's begging. Terrence Crawford not interested in Sean Porter fight. So this is why people are like up in arms. And saying like, hey, wait a minute. Spence is recovering. This is the interview right here. So, you know, that's that's the situation we're under. Crawford rules out Porter fight. Look at it right there. You see that? He rules out Porter fight. That's not a fight that I'm focused on right now or even worried about said Crawford to DAZN about a fight between him and Porter. I'm focused on other things right now. If we had had to fight, and if it made sense, then that would be a fight that we would both agree upon. But right now, I feel like that's not something we should discuss right now. This is his own words. That's why people are like, hey, wait a minute, Errol Spencer recovering. Why aren't you fighting against Porter? 
it's just weird it's like what that's a great fight danny's booked up jesse vargas is booked up mikey's booked up um i don't know what pacquiao is doing but pacquiao and crawford were on the same side of the street and they didn't fight so i'm not presuming that pacquiao is going to want to fight crawford you know next or that's part of the plan they're probably get, getting together their spring and summer schedule right now with pbc you know so i'm not really thinking pacquiao is going to be the guy errol spence is recovering from an accident who else is going to fight you guys is fighting my dude mike dallas jr sean porter is perfectly free i haven't heard of who he's fighting next or that's why people are leaning towards that sean porter and then when crawford let him tell it he doesn't sound too thrilled about it like nah i don't really care we shouldn't talk about that i'm not you know, i'm not really worried about it. even his man bernie that was doing the video didn't sound thrilled about it that's where we're at with this we unpack that's my honest thoughts like i always give y'all y'all let me know what it is in the comment section who's in the right who's in the wrong but all this like going at errol spence and stuff to me it just it's just frustration it's frustration and this frustration would have been avoided if he looked at you know the the boardwalk and seeing all the plays that could be possibly made and how many options he would have like even mikey garcia mikey garcia has been smart here because he after dealing with top rank and having a two year and a half hiatus almost three years legal battle with top rank he made sure he didn't commit to no one it gave him trust issues so mikey garcia he was like nah f that i'm gonna stay a free agent so now he's been working with al Heyman, al Heyman, al Heyman. got some big fights there broner big fights with with um errol spence 48 50 000 people there and now he's over there with the zone so he at least kept his options open Terrence Crawford didn't do that. You know, Crawford didn't keep his option. Oh, he, he re-signed. And from what Bob Arum says, he has Crawford indefinitely or something like he said for a lifetime or something, his whole life. or something. I don't know, whatever their deal is. You have to ask Crawford that. So this is why. And again, the Wilder Fury is a completely different situation because they had history before Bob Arum, Top Rank, and ESPN were even involved with the fight. In fact, ESPN and Top Rank stalled the fight out and made fans wait longer. We gotta wait till February when they could have already fought last May. That's the facts. Let me know what you guys think. We unpack coming to you live. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.